All right, well, it's full of beans, man. What happened last week? Why do you uh, stop people? Why can people buy the GameStop shares? The people demand an answer, and they want to know the details and the truth. Yep, yep. Um, okay, so let me let me start by giving a little bit of background. Um, so I'm the chief executive of Robinhood. Robin yeah, we is actually a. <laughs> Just go I'll, on, I'll go through this quickly. Please. Don't worry. This is this is uh, this is important. Um, it's actually uh, a couple of companies. So there's a an introducing broker dealer uh, called Robinhood Financial, and that basically is the app that you uh, know and love. It processes trades. Uh, you're a customer of of Robinhood Financial. Then there's a clearing broker dealer, um, Robinhood Securities, that clears and settles the trades. And then we have Robinhood Crypto, um, which is our crypto business, um, all of which uh, all of these are kind of different entities that are differently operated. So basically Wednesday of last week, uh, we just had, you know, unprecedented volume, unprecedented load on the system. Uh, a lot of these, you know, so-called meme stocks were, um, you know, going viral on social media and. People were um, people were joining Robinhood, and there was a lot of net buy activity on them, um, as you guys all know. And Robinhood at this time, I think, was number one on the iOS App Store, um, and uh, pretty close, if not number one, on on Google Play as well. So just unprecedented yeah. activity. Um, and so Thursday morning, right? Um, so I'm I'm sleeping. Uh, but at 3.30 a.m. Pacific, um, our operations team receives a file from the NSCC, which is the National Securities Clearing Corporation. So basically, as a broker, as a clearing broker, um, and this is where Robinhood Securities comes in, we have to put up money to the NSCC um, based on some factors, including um, things like the volatility of the uh, of the trading activity, concentration into certain securities, um, and this is this is the equities business. So it's based on stock trading, and uh, uh, not options trading or or anything else. Um, so they gave us a file with a deposit, and the the request was around three billion dollars, um, which is you know about an order of magnitude more than what it typically is, right? So, um, no, 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 why, why and, was that so high? Like, this seems like, like, it, it sounds like this is an unprecedented increase in uh, demand for capital. Um, what formula did they use to calculate that? Well, um, yeah, and just to give context, you know, Robinhood up until that point has raised, uh, you know, a little bit around two billion dollars in total uh, venture capital. Up until now, so it's a big number. Like three billion dollars is um, is a large number, right? So um, basically, the and you know, I the details are we don't have the full details. It's a little bit of an opaque formula, but there's a component called the VAR of it, which is value at risk, and um, that's based on kind of some fairly quantitative things, although it's not, it's not fully transparent. So, uh, there are ways to reverse engineer it, but, uh, it's not kind of publicly shared. Um, and then there's a special component, which is discretionary. Um, so that's, that kind of acts as a multiplier and, um, basically discretionary, discretionary meaning like it's just their opinion. Yeah, there, uh, it's, it's a little bit, I mean, I'm sure there's there's definitely more more than just their opinion, but um, basically, well, I mean, I, I guess like it's based on what, what everyone wants to know. What everyone wants to know is like, did something maybe shady go down here? Like, like it, it's like it seems weird that you'd get a sudden ten billion dollar demand. You know, three three, three, billion, three in the billion. morning. Sorry, how much? Yeah, it was three billion U.S. dollars. Three billion. Okay, there was three billion yeah. around. You know, just suddenly out of nowhere, um, and. What I wouldn't, I wouldn't impute, worth? I wouldn't impute shadiness to it or anything like okay. that. And actually, you know, the NSPC was reasonable subsequent to this, and you know, they've been, they've been, uh, they worked with us to, um, to actually lower it. 
So um, it was unprecedented activity. You know, we don't, I don't have the full context about, um, you know, what was, what was going on in, what's going on in the, in the NSCC to make these calculations. But um, yeah, essentially, it Is was anyone, a large anyone number. holding you hostage right now? Uh, no, no, Blake I'm twice. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for asking. But anyway, so this was, uh, this was obviously nerve wracking and I actually was asleep at this point. You know, the operations team was, uh, was fielding this at, at three o'clock. And then, um, you know, we got back, we put our heads together. Um, you know, our chief operating officer basically said, look, let's call up the higher ups at the NSCC and kind of figure out what's going on. Maybe there's some way we can work with them. And um, basically there was another call and they lowered it to something like $1.4 billion uh, from three. Okay. So, okay, we were making some progress, right? And then, <laughs> but it's still a high number. And then um, we basically proposed, well, let's, let's explain how we plan to, um, let's explain how, you know, we'll manage risk in these symbols throughout the day. Uh, we propose, um, marking these volatile stocks that were kind of driving, driving the activity position closing only. And then, um, at about, uh, an hour before market close market open. So five thirty or five in the morning, they came back and they said, okay, uh, the charge is, or the deposit 700 million which we then deposited and paid promptly. And then, um, everything was fine. Um, so that, that okay. essentially explains why we had to, um, we had to mark these symbols position closing only. And also why, you know, we didn't want to, we knew this was a bad outcome for customers. Um, you know, part of what's been really difficult is, um, Robin Hood stands for, you know, democratizing access to stocks. And yes. we want we want to give people the access. So that's been very, very challenging. Um, but we had no choice in this case. We had to conform to our regulatory capital requirements. And so the team did uh, did what they could to make sure we were available for customers. Who controls this, this, this organization, this clearinghouse? Um, you know, it's a, it's a consortium. It's not, it's not quite a government agency. Um, you know, I, I don't really know the details of, of, uh, of all of that. Okay. But, you know, and to be fair, like we were, we were, uh, I, I think there was legitimate sort of turmoil in the markets. Like these are unprecedented events with these meme stocks and, you know, there was a lot of activity, so there probably is um, so some amount of extra risk in the system that warrants higher higher requirements. So it's not entirely unreasonable, um, but we did operational processes to make sure that customers that had positions could sell their open positions because obviously restricting someone. We got a lot of questions about, OK, you had to restrict buying. Why didn't you also restrict selling? And the fact uh, of the matter is yeah. people get really pissed off if they're holding stock and they want to sell it and they can't. Right. So I think that's, that's categorically worse. So, um, and lots of other brokers, I think were in the same situation. Robin Hood was in the news, but you, you sort of heard this industry wide, right? Other brokers, uh, basically restricted the same exact activity. All right. So, so it sounds like this, this, this organization, you know, calls you up and they basically have a gun to your head, either, either hand over this money or, or else. Um, and so, because I mean, like basically what people are wondering is like, did, did you sell your clients down the river or do you have no choice? And if you had no choice, that's understandable. But then, you know, we got to find out why you had no choice and who are these people that are saying you have no choice? Yeah. Um, I think that's fair. You know, we have to comply with these requirements. Financial institutions have, requirements um you know the 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 formula behind these requirements um i think um it would obviously be ideal if there was a little bit more transparency so we could 
plan better around that. Um, you know, but to be fair, we were able to open and serve our customers and, um, you know, 24, 24 hours later, um, our team raised over a billion dollars in capital so that when we, when we did open, uh, well, when we do open tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be able to kind of relax the stringent position limits that we put on these securities on Friday. Will, will there be any limits? Well, I think there's always going to be some theoretical limit. Like we don't have infinite capital, right? Okay. And on Friday there were limits. Um, so there's always there's always going to have to be some limit. I think the question is, you know, will the limits be high enough to the point where, you know, some they, they won't impact, you know, 99.9 plus percent of customers. Um, so, you know, if someone were to deposit a hundred billion dollars and, and decide to trade in one stock like that, that wouldn't be possible, you know? All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess people really just want to know, you know, if you had no choice, then then you had no choice. Uh, it's gone to the head situation. Um, and, you know, then that's understandable. Uh, but then whoever put that gun to your head should, you know, be willing to answer for the public. Yeah, listen, and, uh, you know, I know there's there's processes. This is unprecedented times. And to be fair to those guys, okay. they've, been, they've been reasonable. So, um we are, I think the, the one thing that is maybe not clear to people is Robin is a participant in the financial system. Um, so we have to work with all of these counterparties. So we do get a lot of questions about, you know, why do you work with market makers? Why do you work with clearing houses? Uh, vertically integrating and getting, um, I mean, it's hard enough to, to build a introducing and a clearing broker dealer. Not too many people have done that. But the financial system that uh, allows customers to trade shares um, is sort of a complex web of multiple parties. And, um, you know, it's it's hard to, I think everyone says oh, it could be better, it could be improved. Um, it's it's just the necessity of, of trading equities in the U.S. that you have to do all these things. I mean, to what degree are you beholden to Citadel? I mean, like, like basically, if Citadel is unhappy, then I, I, then what happens? Yeah, so that you know, there was a rumor that uh, Citadel uh, or other market makers kind of pressured us into doing this, and now that, that's just false, right? Um, market makers execute our trades; they execute trades of of every broker dealer. Um, you know, this was this was a clearinghouse. Um, this was a clearinghouse decision and it was just based on the capital requirements. So, um, from our perspective, you know, Citadel and other market makers, um, weren't involved in that. But wouldn't they have a strong say in, in who got put in charge of that organization since it's an industry consortium, not a government consortium or not a government regulatory agency? Um, I, I don't have any reason to believe that. I think that's just like, you know, then you're getting into kind of the conspiracy theories a little bit. So I just have no no reason to believe that that's the case, you know? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I um, guess uh, so we'll see what happens with future interactions. Um, hopefully that was... Wow. Uh, inside for you know, at least a little bit entertaining. Are you not entertaining? <laughs> if you're watching this, it's because you're awesome.